Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I, I'm not going to focus too much on the AIG issue because I think most of it's been said the other day when Mr. Liddy was here. I think Congress has spoken. I think you understand how we feel and what we'd like to do. I, 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 and I also think that in comparison, the, the proposal that was put out today is you know, much more important to, to the general economic well-being of this country. Um, I guess I want to start with a couple of things. I, I heard, I think, at least two of you say, maybe three, say that you didn't have the authority to do something earlier. Well, I would respectfully disagree with that legal. I understand. It. I don't want to rehash it. But you've used the term exigent circumstances to a fairly well to get into things the Fed never got into before. No one would have thought they could have got into auto loans, student loans, mutual funds. And the truth is, I've supported that because I think it's necessary at the moment. I believe you could have used the same term to get into these issues beforehand to have avoided these issues had you tried. Again, past history, but nonetheless, I still believe that you can do it. I, I, I want to talk about the plan this year. I, I have a few questions. I'm trying to figure it out the last 24 hours or so. And I, I guess I want to, first of all, understand, I see the FDIC as effectively a taxpayer-funded organization. I know it's not technically through taxes, but it is because we all know that if the FDIC failed, we'd bail it out. I don't think anybody really doubts that, uh, number one. Number two is taxpayers pay it through fees, if not through taxes. I know the fees aren't assessed on them directly, but effectively we all pay it through uh, higher bank fees or lower interest paid by the bank. It's all passed through. If the FDIC is included, it's not a six to one ratio, it's a 13 to one ratio. Every dollar that's spent on this no pro new program through the FDIC and, the, and, and taxpayers directly will be 93% paid by taxpayers. So it's a 13 to 1 ratio, not 6 to 1, if you count the FDIC. If somehow you don't count them, I guess it is 6 to 1, but if the FDIC fails, it's on us. I guess a couple of the questions I have, we're, tagging, we're, we're targeting about a trillion dollars worth of these toxic assets. Am I wrong to think that we have anywhere from 20 to 50 trillion dollars of these assets sitting out there someplace? Is that a wrong number? Well, uh, that's a lot. That's larger. The total assets of the banking system are roughly the size of the American of GD, annual GDP, which is roughly 14 trillion now. So that's a that's too big a number. Global financial assets are much larger than those held by U.S. banks. So globally, it's all right, but it's a lot higher than a trillion. True, but the assets that this program targets I understand are a set that. of real estate loans that are uh, have I understand what it targets. It targets all the AAA stuff, which of course amazes me. You're using ratings by the very credit rating agencies that have now been completely um, undermined in anybody with faith in these ratings, I guess hasn't been paying attention in the last year, but so be it. You've got to draw the line somewhere, and I guess that's all we have. I, I want to ask specifically about uh, the FDIC's role here. The FDIC, as I understood it, and again, without getting into glorious words, was there to protect me as a depositor, up to 100,000, now 250. We're trying to extend that. That's what they're there for. And yet, in this case, they're being used to finance the purchase of toxic assets. Nothing to do with what anybody would have thought the FDIC was supposed to be used for. And they're being used, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, to basically float collateralized debt obligations backed by these very toxic assets in order to fund the purchase of these toxic assets, getting them off the books of the investors and putting them on the books of the taxpayers. How am I, what am I missing? Uh, first, FDIC fully supports this program. It uses an existing... I, I don't care whether they support it. I, I'm, I'm no, but, it but it's important because uh, this, ba this is based on an existing mechanism that they use and design as a normal part of what they do as the principal resolution authority of the United States today. So they have broad experience doing this well, and they help design this fully support it. The reason we're doing this, Congressman, is because we think it's the best way to... No, I understand why you're doing it. Answer my question. Are they going to fund these things by floating collateralized debt obligations? No. Then why is it that on your website it says the buyer would receive financing by issuing debt guaranteed by the FDIC? The FDIC guaranteed debt would be collateralized by the purchased assets. What am I, am I, is this not right or am I reading it wrong? I just wouldn't call that a CDO. Oh, okay. But it is a collateralized debt somehow backed by a toxic asset. But, uh, Congressman, you, it, it's good for the FDIC borrowing. No, 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 no. I, 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 I understand. We can disagree on what's good and bad. I, that's what it is. And I understand that you think it's good. Otherwise, you wouldn't propose that. And first, I want to make it very clear. I, I think you gentlemen are, are, are well-intended. 
intelligent men who are trying to save the economy. I think your motivations are fine. I just think you're dead wrong on this one. I think you're jeopardizing the FDIC. I think you're taking, in this particular case, yes, taxpayers may benefit if there's a, if there's a profit, 50-50 benefit. But if there's a loss, the gentleman from Illinois. 